What we're looking at is the budget ledger in Piango, but of course it's NetSuite custom record. What I've created is a budget definition based upon these segments that I'm highlighting right here. So it's the, de the natural department, a grant segment, which in the nonprofit world that represents revenue that is being received for a particular grant awarded to the client. This is a custom segment. So I wanted to highlight the fact that we can work with custom segments. And then we have the natural GL account, in this case, the travel account. I've set it up as an annual budget, but as I mentioned before, we can support quarterly or monthly budgets. And I've created the budget here, this one line item for 10,000, but you can see we have several other line items for other combinations for different budget amounts. So that's the initial budget definition or the budget line. And then if I slide over, the next set of lines here refers to our actuals. But again, what we've done is broken this out into a pre-encumbrance, which are unapproved purchase orders, the encumbered amount, which is approved purchase orders, and then expenses, which are vendor bills. But they could also be journal entries or approved expense reports that would show up here. Then we calculate our remaining amount and an available balance. The remaining amount is a pessimistic viewpoint of what's remaining because it includes this 180 that we're seeing here. The available balance is more of an optimistic view because it rejects these and it just includes the 980 and the, and the 1950. If we were to reject our POs, any open POs, that would give us what's the available balance. That's the information that we're tracking each time a transaction is created. So now let's take a look at a purchase order that I just created. In this case here, we have a vendor, Dr. Jolie Moore, who wants to do some travel related to a particular grant. And so we've created a purchase order for this. If I increase the amount beyond the budget, I am going to see a warning message. So let me increase this just to a large amount so we can see the error message pop up. So when I press OK on that, it will tell me that I've exceeded the budget. And in this case, it's set up as a warning message. So when I press OK, I'm allowed to continue, but it marks the line as being over budget. At that point, if we were to save the transaction, we could use NetSuite workflow routing to be able to line it up for specialized approval. Maybe that goes to the controller who would want to check for any over budget transaction. If I had defined the budget as what we call control mode, then the user would not have been able to move away from this line item. They'd be stuck and would have to either reduce the amount or charge it maybe to a different department that had more budget. So let me change the amount. I'll go back. We'll put it down to 115, which will clear out the over budget flag because now we're within budget. And the other thing I'll do right now is I'm going to flip this over to approve status. Normally this would be where we'd go through the entire NetSuite workflow and you'd route that to a different person, a supervisor, and you'd go down the regular chain that way. For the sake of time, I'll just go ahead and approve it here. We maintain this real time. So as we're saving the transaction, we're also updating our budget ledger. Notice that my pre-encumbrance went down and my encumbrance amount went up. And we can take a look at that in some more detail. We keep a full audit trail of what we call our budget activities. And so you can see here's where I created my original pre-encumbrance for 105. Then we modified it to 115 and we also approved it at the same time. So we pulled 105 out of the pre-encumbrance it re-impacted the budget line with an encumbrance. So now we have a committed amount. And of course, any of these field labels can be changed. We're, we're kind of using some of the nonprofit terminology here, but in the for-profit world, a lot of times these are called commitments. So you'd have a, an uncommitted or a, maybe a soft committed amount, then a committed amount, and then your actuals showing up as a vendor bill. I'm gonna go ahead and receive and bill this particular transaction. The item receipt actually does not have any impact upon the budget ledger. So we don't really track receipts separately from the bills and so forth. But what we do support once we get over here to the bill is a couple of things. One is, let's say on the purchase order side, the person who created the PO incorrectly charged it to the this education department. If I wanted to change and charge it to the marketing department or one of the other ones I've got listed here, what would happen is, is we would move the money or the encumbrance from the original line that's on the PO and book it to the new department that's on the vendor bill. So in a sense, we will increase or give the money back to the original budget line item. 
So we can handle segment changes all the way along the procurement process, whether that's from the requisition to the PO or PO to the vendor bill. We could also, if we're dealing with items and we have different quantities, we can do a partial bill. So if I have a quantity of 10 on the PO, I'm only going to receive and bill, let's say seven of those, then that's what gets marked on the vendor bill. And we only impact the actual amount by this quantity of seven times whatever the rate is. And then the remaining three items are still encumbered until maybe they get closed out. So if you close out the PO, then that would release that money again to be reused for another purchase order. We also support the alternative process where let's say I have several purchase orders that can be combined into a single vendor bill. We track all the way back to the purchase order when we do our budget impacts. So we've seen this encumbered amount now go back down to 980. Our expense is up to 2000. And we now have an expense listed right here against the vendor bill we just created. What we're looking at right now is a budget activity, and this will tell us which transaction it came from as well as which applied transaction. So you can see that it was originally from this PO, it started with at the beginning of the demo. This is where if I had several POs commingled or combined onto one vendor bill, I would see the different line items. All of this data makes it really nice to be able to move into the analytics from NetSuite to be able to slice and dice data by transaction, by department, by account, however we want to view it. We can show a certain number of budgets within a threshold and then be able to display that in a KPI format. So then that would go onto your dashboard. So here it just tells me which accounts are over budget quick snapshot of uh, identifying potential accounts that are exceeding the budget. And then from there, we can drill down to look at the detail. I can also look at a standard budget to actual format report. And the difference here is that we are including the pre-encumbered and encumbered amounts. So your standard NetSuite budget to actual would only compare your expense amounts against your budgets to get you your percent of. Here we're showing all three of these just like we did on the other main dashboard view. And all of that then gets included. So it's a little bit more accurate view of what's remaining in your budget. Of course, we're, we're leveraging NetSuite save search and reporting capabilities to be able to generate that. So for example, I can look at a expenses by account and then display that as a nice little bar chart. The basic idea there is I can break everything out by account, by department, whichever segment that needs to be done. These reports can be put on the dashboard. This is something that we typically work with during the implementation is to make sure that the reporting side of things is what the client needs to see. That pretty much wraps up the budget control process.